I'll invite people to take a seat as we begin. We know there are people here who have choir practice to get to, so we don't want to make them late because, you know, choir directors are, are, can be scary, so. Uh, welcome everybody, my name is Nabuko Ewi, I'm the minister here at Grosvenor Park United Church. Just a couple of things before we get started. There is a washroom um, right through those doors over there. It's an um, accessible all gender washroom. There are stalled gendered washrooms down, downstairs. So you take the stairs and you'll find them down there. And other than that, um, we do have a lift to help people get up and down if that's an issue. And otherwise, um, we, it is just a relaxed time as we gather for Monday Thursday uh, or Holy Thursday together with uh, all our kin who, that's who you are. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And I'll invite Sheila forward. Are you not the congregational leader? But I have, I have it. I have all of it. I have the script. Saved. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Welcome. I'm. Oops. Can yeah. we? Let's do that. I have my, I have my um, can you hear me now? A little bit. Not so well. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can move this oh. too. Okay. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> so organized it's amazing um, so hi everybody I'm Sheila Caddo and I'll be Grosvenor Park's unit congregational leader for today and so welcome to our Monday Thursday evening meal and worship shared jointly by three congregations actually I thought there were four but this is great so on behalf of Grosvenor Park United Church and our minister Reverend Nabucco EY and Mayfair United Church and their minister, Shelley Manley Tanis, who's on leave, and Michael Webster, who's filling in, and Knox United Church and their minister, Kent Moan. I'm scanning, but I can't see where people are. There he is, sorry. And Grace Westminster United Church and their minister, Brenda Curtis. So hi, we're so welcome, or so happy to have you all here. And so welcome to everyone who's joining us in person and to folks who are watching us on small and large screens at home and in other places. And now it's time for lighting candles and passing the peace. Um, are the candles here? Okay. Do we have a candle lighter? Okay, Marnie's gonna fill in. Great, great. And Lauren, okay. <laughs> Thanks. So we'll start by lighting the Christ candle. We light this Christ candle to remind us of the holy presence. And we'll say together, we come to learn to love each other and the world with all that we are in Jesus' name. And next we light the orange candle to acknowledge the relationships we seek to strengthen on Treaty 6 territory. The land is frozen, and it looks like there's very little growth on the surface. But below the earth, we know things are happening. The land is resting and preparing for a new season of growth. We, too, seek growth and new life, and sometimes it takes time to prepare ourselves. We prepare to learn and live out truth and reconciliation. We are grateful for all who have lived for generations on Treaty 6 land and continue to share stories and live in relationship with the land. We acknowledge people who were and are part of Treaty 6, the Cree, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, Dene, Soto, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Now we light the rainbow candle to remind us that those who have been turned away, forgotten or persecuted, find belonging in Jesus, two-spirit, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, 
asexual, plus all others in our sexual and gender diversities and allies. May we be a sanctuary, a shelter, a safe place to be ourselves, to live love and acceptance. And for the passing of the peace, Wagodawin, Salam, Shalom. Creator calls us to live in peace. Peace be with you all. Also with you. This seems to be a hard time in our world, and Lent can be a hard time in our faith life. Here we are moving toward the crucifixion, and it feels like the world has not changed. We are tempted to hopelessness and despair. We see around us pain, grief, war, the environment in crisis, racism, and homophobia. Friends are in pain. Meaninglessness is hovering. Pandemic traumas linger. Privilege can blind or feel like shame. And there is so much, too much to do. And so we wonder, did Jesus' life, do our lives, make any difference at all? Every year in the Christmas season, we celebrate God's coming to us in Jesus, a tiny child. And yet, children around our world and right here at home are hurting. In the Easter season, we say that in Jesus, God has shown us that life wins over death. And yet, it seems to hover always nearby. As we should, the church is questioning our role. Our role is being questioned. Expansive theologies are trashed by others, and yet we feel called to make a difference. In the midst of it all, we ask, where is God? And this is not a bad question to ask. Where is God? Our stories are full of creator's hope, presence, and love. There are clues, covenants, and promises that God makes repeatedly with our ancestors and with us. And we witness Jesus choosing life again and again. Our mystics and our poets see the signs. We see God's presence here and now, knowing that our neighbors at Knox Grosvenor Park, Mayfair, and Grace Westminster United Churches, as well as our siblings in Christ around the world, are also offering these words, hearing these stories, and working together to make a change. May this Lenten journey be a time of asking the questions and watching for the signs. Together we worship God.
the cross that we received from Grace Westminster United Church has been part of our visual display for a while and our theme has been turning. And this will be sort of the last time we think about that seriously as at Good Friday we face the cross head on. So this cross is a little wonky looking and um, we are trying to make it turn for a little bit and it will be noisy and it won't look pretty but it is part of our journey. So as we begin our prayer for beginning, go ahead. When you hear me say, in Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes, please respond with, we turn towards God. This is the uh, American Sign Language for turn. So we'll try that together. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs of the change to come. Signs of the change to come like voices crying out for peace all over our world. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is also offering signs of love. Signs of love like communities of faith, sharing in Lent and Easter together, feeding the hungry, and living out apologies to those we have hurt. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs of hope. Signs of hope like ordinary people doing the work of reconciliation, mental health awareness, crisis support, planting gardens, and planting peace. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs that the world is about to turn, Signs that the world is about to turn like congregations greening, affirming all people as beloved, and welcoming refugee families from all over the world. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs that we are here today in this moment for a reason. We are here for a reason. We are part of this time of worship. We are part of the change. May we be strengthened here to help bring about the turning of the world. Amen. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> Why are we here? We gather because today, or together, we share in food. 
We strengthen ourselves for the work of turning in our lives and in our world. Food has a beautiful way of making us feel less lonely in our pain or in our isolation or in our grief. Kendall Vanderslice founded the nonprofit Edible Theology, founded on the belief that deep healing and connection takes place best over food and at the table. Kendall says, Every, every time I bake, I am reminded that death is necessary for resurrection. The tartness of sourdough is a sharp reminder that when wheat or dough or beloved friends die, by God's mercy, they bear much fruit. God meets us at the kitchen and at the table. Listen to this story. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world and to go to the Holy One. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to live, love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that God had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? So we gather this night to remember. Join me in the blessing. Blessed are you, creator of the universe, maker of the land, the waters, the air, the food, the animals, and the people who are part of this land. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. We give thanks that we are here, that we actively and deliberately turn to you, turn towards each other, turn with gratitude for the food we are about to receive and those who have prepared it. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. To you we give thanks. Amen and amen. From John 13, 3 to 17. Jesus knew that God had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put upon an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, you're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet then, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if I've if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said, not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I've done to you? 
You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I have laid down the pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. You're going to be invited to, um, there are soups or chilies all the way along. There are bowls. Um, please help yourself. Uh, the gluten-free would be at that station there. There's also a gluten-free, I can't remember if it's chili or, or soup. But um, please enjoy.
Hello, folks. I don't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that there are more uh, pots on this side. There's some water out, and the coffee's now out, and there's a veggie tray if you missed that. So a few things have gotten out, come out late. You hear me? Oh, there. Please continue eating. On the night before Jesus was taken away to what would be to his death, he gathered with his friends and family to celebrate the Passover, the great feast of freedom of God's people, Israel. He had some important things to remind them of. Before the night was over, so he did what he had often done. He began to teach. Excuse me. In the scripture, John 13, 12 to 15, and 20. Then he said, Do you understand what I've done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash others, each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act, it, act like it and live a blessed life. Make sure you get this right. Receiving someone I send is the same as receiving me. Just as receiving me is the same as receiving the one who sent me.
I would just invite you to just pause where you are in finishing your meal as we bring this meal to our community here tonight. So friends, Jesus took the bread that was on the table and gave thanks. Thank you, God, for the bread of life. And he broke the bread and said, this is my body, which I offer for you. Each time you eat bread, remember me. God of all love, send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and upon all who sit at the table tonight, that it and we might truly be the body of Christ. And so if you, you have your little cup of bread, so let us take the bread. The bread of life, thanks be to God. Jesus took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Thank you, God, for the blessing of the cup. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink it. This is my promise in my life's blood. I am certain that I won't be drinking any more until God's kingdom is established. So we drink and we remember. God of all love, send your Holy Spirit upon this filled cup and upon all who sit at the table tonight, that it and we might truly be the body of Jesus Christ. Loving one, one another, another as, as he loved us. Oh, and if you would uh, take your cup of juice now.
holy and gracious one who feeds us with bread, justice, and compassion. We pray for our church communities, our neighborhoods, our partners in prayer, as we express our yearning to together turn in faith and wonder to recognize divine love in the world. We pray, for, oops, we pray for the communities and groups who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, give safe space for all those who live in danger. We pray for the ways in which we can turn from our individual fears and despair to recognize in word and deed divine love in the world. We pray for our world, yearning to become a peaceful global community, seeking the best for each other in the name of the Spirit. May we turn to compassion and passion for justice as human beings, as part of creation, as beloved ones made in the image of God, as people who follow Jesus' way. As we seek, may we find all that you call us to do and be. We pray in the name of Jesus, who shared with his friends and shares with us all, as we pray as Jesus taught, saying in our own preferred language and words, together, our Father and Mother, Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please continue to um, eat if you want more to eat. You can continue to do that. I have a serviette in my hand um, to remind you that uh, what one of our uh, things that we have started doing is to, to be more mindful about our compost. So if you are finished, we would invite you to take your serviette and use it to wipe out your bowl. And there is a compost 
bucket and put that serviette with the food stains on it into the compost bucket, which will help us so we don't have to rinse the dishes and use water, and it will help us to put the compost where it can be of good use. Reminder that tomorrow, um, Mayfair, 10.30, and, and um, also at Grace Westminster, what time is your service? 10.30, and a Sunday um, morning, 7.30 at Knox United Church. Bank. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you a story. After the meal was over, Jesus sadly told Peter, Simon Peter, that he will be betrayed by him. Then he reminded all of us of the marriage promises given to all, that he was building a room unto the family room where all would be welcomed. It was odd and not quite right, but comforting nonetheless. Then came the promise the promise of an advocate, a comforter, a spirit, who would move in and among us and give us peace. And he told us that he would be leaving us, and even so, he was leaving us in peace. His Watasquin, his Shalom, his Salam, his Verid, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Never let them be afraid. And he told us to turn our faces towards that which we seek, that he would be the vine and we would be the branches. Together we turn towards that life force that call to love and justice. And it didn't help us that night. So the next night, as he was arrested in the garden, but in the future, when we felt so confused and so thrown off our paths, lost. When we were searching for, seeking that path, that direction, that hope we once knew, we knew we would have it again. We remember his words. We remember his promises. Friends, may the bread we have eaten, may the wine we have tasted, may the life that we have shared be blessing and blessed by you. O oh God. We hear these words as we leave this place this night. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, 
that you also love one another. We go, knowing the Holy One leads us, turns to us and turns with us in the holy dance of life. This night and every night, amen. <laughs>